السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته Ladies and gentlemen welcome back to another video This is the second tutorial of Vulcan Let's get started So first of all I want to, to show you the things that I've just edited It's not really too much It's just a bit of uh, decorations and stuff like that So for example in the macro panic I've actually made it into multi-line macro Okay, And of course to use multi-line macros You have to add this uh, backslash into into the end of the line so it actually skips it ignores the end of the line uh, like it doesn't exist so it can it can actually be included in the macro and of course the last line doesn't need that uh, but the other ones need uh, to include this backslash at the end all right and look at that it's much more readable much more better so yeah lovely uh, that's the first thing that i changed second thing i just uh, made some comments and like to to separate this state into sections there is the configurable section which i'm allowed to actually change basically here to initialize here and there's also the the glw section and the vulcan section All right and of course i actually refactored the name so it uses this uh this this naming instead of this naming so instead of this i actually made it like this and uh, this is all preference you can use to like you can choose to use uh, to refactor your code like this or to not to you're free to do whatever you want doesn't really matter so like just to make sure to be consistent so for example if you if you're calling a cow a cow then call it a cow if you're calling a cow a chicken then call it a chicken that's basically the example that you should know all right just be consistent with your naming if you call something something then call it with that something <laughs> just be consistent all right so yeah anyway uh set up error handling glwc error callback all right so i didn't change that didn't change that stuff all right <laughs> api version by the way i also read the specs of vulcan API version, there is the patch. Patch is ignored in terms of uh, creating an instance, all right? And I think the variant is probably the same. What's really important about the API version in create instance is the major and the minor, uh, okay? That's the only thing that matters for creating an instance. And by the way, this API version is supposed to be the maximum version, okay? The, the highest version of all your physical devices basically. Uh, for example, let's say you're using two physical devices. Let's just say that, okay? Then let's say you have uh, a physical device that supports 1.2 and then another physical device that supports 1.3. Then you should probably go with API version 1.3 because it's the highest. At least that's what I understood until now, okay? So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Also, I'm going to add one other thing, which is uh, the name, application name. Uh, and why I, I, I actually wanted to add application name is simply because, you know, in Windows, there is something called, uh, uh, I think, for example, in NVIDIA, there is like a platform where you actually choose applications and choose their settings and stuff. So it may be useful for that, you know, so I just read her. Uh, use that so if if that's the case then you know it can actually identify it well uh, all right so I'll just use that then i still don't care about the versions but application name sure fine all right so we're just gonna add it to the state state application name you can still choose to not use it though you can still choose to not use it that doesn't really matter that much uh, so yeah, I'm just gonna add it application name for the engine name. It doesn't matter in this case to to be honest uh, But let's just say engine name, okay fine 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 P engine name there you go All right, lovely now. Let's make sure to add those into the configurable section uh with the chars here const char we have the what it's called the application name mm -hmm. and then of course we have const char 
And of course, I'm using const because, in fact, it is a literal. I'm passing a literal string. Uh, so yeah, application name, then the engine name. All right, lovely. Now I can actually go ahead and change it to whatever, whichever I want here. Uh, let's say dot application name is equal to. Well, let's just go to code taco. Uh, I think, or I don't know. Okay. And then dot uh, engine name equal to. I don't know. Let's see code taco once again. I don't know what to call them. Uh, actually, let's call it engine name. Uh, uh, code taco engine. And let's go. All right, so that's pretty much it. And I would like to actually order it in this way. All right, lovely. Okay, uh, nice stuff. Now what's next? Let's just make sure this is all working, by the way. Yep, all working, lovely. Uh, okay. So is there anything actually? Yeah, I changed this. Okay, so vacate enumerate instance version. It actually returns a result. In the last episode, I forgot to actually add a panic, so it can handle the the result that it gives you. And in fact, this won't. This really won't fail, but it will fail only in one case that I read in the Vulkan specs. Okay, and that case is if you have some layers. In this case, we don't have layers, but I still choose to panic anyway. So I just choose to handle the error anyway. So if you have a layer that goes ahead and allocates memory, if it fails to allocate memory uh, while calling this VK enumerate instance version, then that layer will actually return uh, the result of out of memory. That's why you have to handle, that's why this, uh, this guy returned a VK result. That's pretty much it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. A nice stuff. All right, all right, all right. Log info, set up error handling. Let's create a space there. Create window. And I would like to actually create the instance first, because why not? Um, you can choose whatever order you want. I just see that m much more fitting, I think. Uh, let's just not care about dangling pointers for now. Uh, since you know, like the cleanup is the last function anyway, so there's no need to actually make our lives much harder. So yeah, GFW destroy. Actually, no. Let's just uh, okay. VK destroy instance and GFW destroy window. Now the only thing that you have to watch out here in terms of init and the uh, cleanup is the fact that whatever you create first, you should destroy last, and whatever you create last, you should destroy first. Uh, it's like a stack, you know, it's like when you have, let's say some books, okay, you push the first book, you have the second book, the third book, the fourth book. If you want to remove the, the, the bottom book, then everything will crumble. All the books that are on top of it will crumble. That's what may happen here. Okay. So for example, here instance, uh, like some like for example, when we're gonna create a physical device, it's gonna actually depend on instance, okay? And so if you removed instance first, then physical device will create problems for you because it's no longer valid memory access, all right? So uh, that's why you should actually, what you create, 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 then destroy the last and goes on like that until you, destroy the the first thing that you created basically just like a stack and that's basically what's happening here so as you can see create instance it's first which means i have to destroy it last even though even though there's no dependency it doesn't really matter uh, because window doesn't depend on instance but just make sure this is a rule so you, you never fall into this trap okay uh, that's basically it just so you can save yourself uh, some some hours or some days or who knows like god knows how much time but anyway mm -hmm. now that's pretty much it for what i actually needed now now let's actually create a first of all we're gonna create a surface actually not a surface we're gonna choose the uh, we're gonna select a physical device first so select physical device let's go 
And then afterward, we're going to select, actually, we're going to create the surface, the window surface, create surface, let's go. And of course, I'm going to pass in the state. We're going to always pass in the state and the functions will go ahead and mutate those states and we'll take the values that it needs from that state. All right, so select physical device, then create surface. And I choose this order because in fact, to create a surface, you need a physical device and you also need an instance. And I think you also need a window. I don't really remember exactly. In fact, you don't, you probably don't need, I don't, I don't remember. We're going to see, we're going to see, we're going to see later on. But yeah, so after creating a surface, we need to choose a Q family, right? So select a Q family. There you go. Pass in the state. And after selecting a Q family, we have to, let's see. I think we have to create the device. State. And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, now let's create those functions. Okay, let's just copy those. Void. Open it up. It's basically like this. Let's actually, okay, just like that. Create surface, select key family, and create device. And after that, I want to, to get the queue because in fact, when you create a device, you also it also creates queues, but then you need a, a handle to the queue, okay? So we have to say get queue state and by the way, the most tutorials uh, like create multiple queues, but then they use only one queue, which is useless. You know, I understand the intention behind it. it like it wants to show you how you can create two queues or like multiple queues, uh, but it's just unnecessary for now since we're not handling them anyway. So there's just no need. It just confuses beginners. And also, by the way, there is something that beginners may, may do, which is that they may use like the maximum possible cues like if you let, let's take it straight okay um so cues are like like cpu threads but cues are like the gpu threads okay so you know where cpu have multiple cores that can execute multiple things at the same time you know and it also have multiple threads so for example in fact, you can have like a lot of threads in, but basically you can think about it as CPU cores. Okay. Um, but yeah, 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 yeah. And those queues are actually, uh, grouped into families and each family have different function. Okay. Can do different tasks. For example, one, one queue family can do compute, one other, other one can do with graphics, one can transfer data from the GPU to the, CPU, to the RAM, to the system memory and back and stuff like that. Mm. But yeah. Um, now the thing is, if you create, let's say, let's say 16 queues, right? And then you declared and you created the device with, with those 16 queues. If you didn't use those 16 queues, then what's going to happen is the fact that you're, you're just wasting a lot of performance because when you tell, when you have created 16 queues, let's say you're telling the driver that you are, the driver will think that you want to use all of those 16 queues. So it may optimize somehow to actually allow you like to allow you to use all of those queues at the same time by basically distributing a workforce between those queues. And then you're going to lose a lot of performance in the process. If you're going to use one queue, then just use one queue and pretty much for beginners and like really for now, just use one queue. There's no need to use multiple queues. Like really, um, in the future, maybe we're going to use multiple few, uh, multiple queues, but for now just use one queue. That's just more than enough. Uh, for our purposes. Okay. Uh, so yeah, create device. So that was pretty much it. The surface is just an abstraction over the window. It's just a cross platform abstraction over the window because Vulcan is cross platform, you know, and mm, by the way, I, I actually missed something. Hold on. 
yeah we have to add some extension to actually support that which is interesting uh but yeah so select q family create device blah 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 get q all right anyways so i think let's start already now let's just make sure to create the other function get q and by the way so i can use the surface i have to add Oh, I already added the extensions. Oh my god, I forgot. Yeah, I added them from GFW. Yeah, that give give us the extensions to actually use the sur to create a surface and stuff like that. All right, nice. Now, what's the first thing? It selects physical device. So, uh, the so first of all, let's actually see what we can do. Okay, so VK enumerates physical devices. So you pass to it the instance. So state instance there you go then the physical device count physical device counts actually not state uh, i'm gonna say just count like this i'm gonna actually pass in an address to that and you know why and then for physical devices i'm just gonna say null for now and of course since i gave it an address i have to actually create a variable uint32t Let's say count. All right, lovely. Now it's basically gonna go ahead, VK enumerate physical devices. If you say null here, if you say null in physical devices, and then you give it an address here in the count, then we'll go ahead, it will uh, put the count, how much physical devices there is inside of this variable, which is awesome. Okay, that's pretty much what we need. Of course, this can fail. That's why we're gonna panic here. Gonna panic, panic, panic. Couldn't enumerate physical, let's say physical devices count. And that's basically the error message. All right, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Panic, vacate, enumerate physical devices. There you go. All uh, right, now we got the count. In fact, I can even print f count. So I can show you. Hi. Count. Make sure to add a new line so we can flush the stream. And the GFW is not initialized. GFW library is not initialized. Uh, what are you talking about though? Interesting. Oh yeah, because in fact, yeah, that makes sense. Because instances using GLW required extensions, right? That makes total sense. So let's actually do the opposite. GLW window, let's go. I actually forgot about that completely. And there you go. So as you can see, it says one physical device because in fact, I only have one physical device. Now, what we're gonna do here, we're just gonna make sure that that count is at least one, okay? It's not zero because in fact, zero means that we don't have any physical device to work with, which is of course we cannot, it's a, basically we cannot do that. Right, so panic error. So if count is equal to zero, then well, we have a problem. <laughs> okay, so Q uh, count equals zero. And if that's the case, uh, couldn't, find a Vulcan supported physical device. All right, there we go. Now, right, nice stuff. Couldn't find a Vulcan supported physical device. Then we're gonna say VK enumerate physical devices again. I'm gonna pass in the instance here. Oh, state instance. There we go. And then the physical device counts. We're going to do the same thing once again. Uh, in fact, no, hold on a second. I'm just going to copy this guy, okay? I'm going to change one single thing, which is that instead of null here, we're going to say physical devices, or let's just call it devices, okay? And then here, Instead of count, I'm only interested in one 
in one Vulkan device, which is the first one. That's why I don't need to actually load all of that stuff. So I'm just going to say this. I'm going to say uh, UN32. UN32T, there you go. We're going to initialize it as one. Because I'm only interested in one Vulkan device. All right. And of course, I'm going to, in fact, not devices. But uh, in fact, I'm going to put it directly into the state. So state physical device. And of course, I'm going to give it a reference to that. And we're going to create this field. As you can see, I have created for me, aka physical device, physical device. Nice. Lovely. All right. So now we have probably selected a physical device. We basically selected the first physical device by Vulkan. You can do more complex things by, you know, taking the properties of each physical device and comparing them and, and checking if there is some limits, etc., etc. But we're not going to do that because pro most of the time, uh, the operating system actually gives you back the best, uh, like the best physical device that you should use. Uh, for example, depending on the power settings, for example, in Windows, you have you have power settings, if you say that you want to save power. Uh, and if you have like, let's say two GPUs, you have an integrated GPU, and a dedicated GPU, it's gonna, if you want to save power, it's gonna it's gonna order the integrated GPU first because in fact integrated gpu is less performant but consumes more power and the opposite thing for dedicated uh, gpus if if you set the power settings in windows let's say to to performance then that means it will actually gives us back the first physical device as the the best device the best performant device which is the dedicated one okay and that's basically it. Uh, all right, so that's the select physical device thing. Let's make sure everything is working fine. Lovely. Uh, next up, we're gonna create the surface. And to create the surface, just gonna use GFW, GFW. Uh, create window surface, there you go. Here you give it the, the instance, nice. And then you give it the window. And then you give it the allocator. We already have all of these guys. And then you give it a reference to a surface. Uh, all right, state surface. Let's go. Let's go. And it's going to create this field surface. And as you can see, I have created it. There you go. Pretty much. Now we probably created the window surface and we don't have to check for the result, I believe. Maybe. Hold on a second. No. Hold on. Hmm. Not sure to be honest, because in fact it is giving me a VK result somehow here, uh, which is interesting. I'm not sure if it will call the, the GFW callback or not. But just for safety though, and by the way, we're using GFW because it's the one that is cross-platform. Uh, so yeah, panic. Just let's just make sure that's the case. I couldn't create window surface. Better be safe than sorry. So yeah, and that's pretty much it. That's how you create the surface, I believe. Let's make sure everything is fine. There you go. Then we have to select a queue family. Now you can probably just select the first queue family. Um, uh, but we're going to do some interesting stuff to, to get that. But you know what? I'm going to show you an application called Vulcan Caps Viewer. There you go. It's a really interesting application made by a really skilled developer. All right. Um, so here you select your device. In my case, I only have one device, which is NVIDIA GeForce CTX 1650. It's GPU index zero, which is basically the first device. Okay, and as you can see, I have all these crazy stuff here, which is really nice. Um, but what I'm interested in is the Q families in this case. 
Now, as you can see in my GPU, at least I have uh, three Q families. I have the first Q family, which have graphics flag, graphics bit, compute bit, transfer bit, and transport binding bit. As you can notice here, each family can do some some certain functionalities. For example, the, the first Q family can do all of these, these stuff. And you can request 16 queues from it. And they support presentation. Basically, they support presenting into the window. Okay, and then you have the Q family one, which supports transferring operations and then sparse binding and then supports presentation, which is false in this case. It does it means it doesn't support presentation. Q family two, and this one also supports presentation, but it doesn't support graphics. So as you can notice, even here, we can notice that in fact, the Q family zero is the best one. But just for the sake of the tutorial, uh, we're just gonna make sure that it is the one. <laughs> All right, so how we can do that? All right. So let's use VK enumerate uh, physical device key family tag. No, actually not enumerate. Probably VK get key families. Yeah, there we go. VK get the physical device key family properties. That's what it takes. And now I'm just going to say not self state uh, physical device. We're going to pass that and then state hmm q family property count now here in fact i'm gonna put that into an account variable and then the third one is q family properties now for this one for now i'm gonna take uh, i'm gonna say null until i get my count and now i'm just gonna say you enter the t count okay and there you go. You int 32 T count. Now, basically this function is supposed to put the, how much uh, physical device cube family properties there is inside the count. Basically how much Q families there is. In my case, it should give me three, okay? And, and of course this can actually, no, it doesn't return any results. So we don't need to use panic, All right? Interesting. Uh, okay, make sure to set this to null because in fact, if you don't, then it's not going to put the value. In fact, it's going to tick the value. And we're going to show you how that works in a second. So you enter it to, to count T and then we're going to have a graphics. You and 32 T graphics, not graphics. Oh my God. Um, Q family. Let's go. Uh, let's just put it actually here though. Hold on a second. Here. Okay, fine. And I'm just going to say big, actually not Q family, but Q families. All right. And in fact, it's not going to be a Q and 32 T. It's going to be a VK Q family properties. There you go. It's a struct, of course. And it contains these properties right here. And we're actually interested into the Q flags, which is basically these guys, right? So I'm trying to take this information. So Q families. Now the thing is here, I need to allocate enough space depending on how much, like we have how much elements we have that we got in count uh, using Vulkan. And then the size of this VKQ family property struct in bytes. And here's how we're going to do it. We're going to malloc uh, count times size of VKQ family properties. Okay. Mm, initialize in VKQ family. Oh yeah, it, this should be a pointer. And there you go. Mm, now we have to make sure that it's allocated successfully. So I'm going to say panic, uh, Q families. Let's see, panic, Q families equal to null. So if it is equal to null, which means it didn't allocate, couldn't allocate memory. There you go. 
nice stuff so that's going to make sure that it, the memory have been allocated successfully and next up i'm going to call the same function once again but this time i'm going to also include i'm going to tell it the the new allocated memory so we can put it there okay and i'm not using if you notice i'm not using any more this way of doing it just we have one variable and that's it but the thing is here we were only interested in one item that's why we didn't need to allocate anything but now here we don't know how much elements in compile time so we cannot make a, an array because we don't know how much the size is um so we have to this is similar to vector in c and stuff like that so we need to allocate some memory at runtime that is the in the correct size in bytes of course and then you basically pass the up uh, the pointer you got from malloc into the into vulcan so we can put all that information for you in that in that location all right interesting um now let's see what we can do do, 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 do. by the way make sure to free whenever you use malloc you have to free that memory otherwise it's going to be a leaking memory and what is leaking memory leaked memory is basically some wasted memory that you cannot access anymore your program cannot use anymore and it's really critical if you're allocating memory inside the loop and it will keep on accumulating that wasted memory until you know uh, at some point you're just gonna waste all the memory of the system and your program may crash or even worse your os may crash so yeah free and we're gonna free that q families make sure to always whenever you use malloc use free and there you go that basically frees or release not necessarily release but it frees it goes ahead freeze that memory so you can use it again or the os can use it or something like that but yeah all right nice stuff now before we actually free that queues families q families and by the way it is important to not access that q families after you free it otherwise you're going to access uh, it's going to be you know uh, just going to be garbage there or it's going to sig fault basically which means that you have accessed the, the memory that you should have not accessed or edited basically but anyways now what we should do we're gonna go through all the all the queues and how we're gonna do that i'm gonna say q family index just like that i just have a loop here and here i'm just gonna use count so basically from zero up to count and there you go now let's get our bk Uh, AK, okay, AKQ family properties. Properties is equal to. All right, and now we're just going to use the Q families. I'm going to here pass in the Q family index. Let's go. And afterwards, we're going to check. Now we can actually access, we have access to the properties. Now we can check for the Q flags. We can check if it is, if it contains the graphics bit. And we can also check for the other ones, but right now we're just only interested in the graphics bit. Okay, so if properties, all right, the Q flags, you can also check what it, how much Qs there is, but properties.q flags, all right. We're gonna say and this is a bit manipulation operator and we're gonna say vk let's see vk graphics uh, graphics bit you know something vk q graphics bit there you go and so now we have actually checked if if the q family supports graphics or not the next thing that next condition that we have to check if that q family supports presentation or not because if it doesn't support presentation to our surface that is linked to our window then we cannot use it to render into the window okay uh, or the surface to be exact so 
So that's what we're gonna say. You're gonna use GFW, of course, for cross-platform, but you can also check using Token, but it's not cross-platform. So GFW get physical device presentation support. Here you're passing the state. I mean the instance. And then here you pass in the uh, physical device. And after that, you pass in the key family. So state key family, right? No, actually, we already have the key family index. There you go. You just pass in the key family index, the physical device, and the instance, and it will tell you if that key family supports presentation or not. Two, basically. All right, that's pretty much it. Now, if that's the case, that means we have selected the Q family, like it is suitable for our purpose. And so now how are we gonna do this? All right. So in fact, we're gonna say, first of all, at, at the start of the function, we're gonna say state. Mm, Q family, Q family is equal to let's say you enter the two max we cannot use minus one or, or negative values because it's actually an assigned integer so i'm just going to use the the biggest number possible which is you enter the two max to define that there is basically we haven't selected any q family all right interesting let's create that new field by the way there you go and i'm not going to use inside int actually i'm going to use you enter the two t There you go, Q family. And I think, by the way, uh, let's also use U N32 here. And that's basically it. All right, fine, lovely. Now, here, if we find it, then we're just gonna say state Q family is equal to Q family index. And we're also gonna break at this point because we don't need to check the other queues, right? Because we already have found the correct queue. So why do that? Um, all right, now next up, we're just gonna make sure that we have found the, the correct queue, like a suitable queue, a queue family to be, to be exact. And the error should be, just gonna make sure that state queue family is, if it's equal to UN32 max, then that means this code haven't, we haven't, basically we haven't find, found a, a suitable Q family. And that means I'm just gonna, error couldn't find a suitable uh, Q family. There you go. And that's pretty much it. Now this will only error if, if uh, Q family is set to, in 32 max. All right, lovely stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably it. Yep, probably. Now, if I actually go ahead and let's say I've done this and then just debug state and let's see the key family index that we have. There we go, key family, it selected zero, as you can see here, which is the correct one, because in fact here, zero is, is the one that contains graphics bit and that the one that supports presentation. So that is lovely. By the way, let's make sure to actually run the Falcon config, VK config, there you go. So if there is any errors or any problem, it's gonna tell me. Let's just make sure, debug. There you go, there's no problem, as you can see here. Let's, let me remove this guy. There we go. As you can see, there's no... What's going on? Why it's not responding? I don't understand. Okay, there's a problem here. Huh. Type VK object type surface KTR. What do you mean? For instance, uh, VK surface KTR has not been destroyed. Oh, oh yeah, uh, I have fallen into the trap, right? Somehow. 
Uh, how did I fall into the trap? Yeah, because I think I destroyed the window and maybe destroyed the in the the surface with it. Yeah, seems like it. Seems like it. Yep, seems like it. Let let me make sure to to destroy the surface though. Make a destroy surface KHR and let's pass in the surface. And of course, let's pass in the alligator. Mm, what it needs other than that? It also needs uh, the instance. Nice. Date instance. There you go. There you go. Now it's all fine. You just have to, to destroy the surface first, as you can see here. Uh, so yeah. Uh, what if I destroyed the instance before the window? Let's see what's going to happen here. Yep, seems like we have a problem. Interesting. Interesting. So probably that's not a good idea. <laughs> you have to destroy the window first because probably because of the surface. So the ins like the surface is dependent on the instance and the the window is dependent on the surface or something like that. But anyways, Anyways, this works, lovely. Now, next up is we have create device. So how do you create a device? Now, that is interesting. So let's use vacate create device. And of course, it's panic. Okay. Create device. Here you pass in the physical device. Afterwards, you pass in the vacate device create info. And of course, a reference to it. So vacate device queue create info. Let's go. And next up, we're going to make sure to say S type is equal to vacate device queue create info there you go that's the first thing second thing queue family index is state queue family right and next up is queue count we're gonna only need one queue and next up uh queue properties we're just gonna create a reference to Low array. In this case, it's not going to be array. It's going to be one thing. Uh, because I only have one queue. So that's why. And the next thing is queue family index queue count. I think that's it, hopefully. Actually, I think I need P. Huh. Actually, no, what I'm doing here, this is the actual VK device queue create info. But I still do need this. I still do need this. Okay, so I, I actually need device create info. Okay. And boom, let's make an error here. Couldn't create device. Let's go. All right. And then here dot p q create infos. Now I can actually use that thing that I've created before. And then q create info count. I'm gonna go with one because I only have one q create info as you can see here. Next step is let's make sure to to set the s type. Uh, vk structure type device create info. There you go. But make sure to put that upward. I just like to, to have it here, you know, basically. And then afterwards, all right, be enabled extension names. I do need the extensions. And by the way, the layers are deprecated. Uh, the device layers are deprecated now, which is nice. So 
Okay. P now ex enable extensions count. I only need one extension, which is gonna be let's char. Gonna be VK. Ex uh, let's see, swap chain extension. There we go. BKKH arcs uh, swap chain extension name. Lovely. And I think that's pretty much it at this point. Yeah, I think so. I need to remove that. Uh, interesting. I actually do need that though. Mm -hmm. But I forgot about the allocator, I think, yeah. State allocator. Play, let's see. Actually, I need the, the physical device to create info, allocator, then the device. All right, so I gave it the physical device. Now I have to say state device. And of course, I need to give a reference so we can put it there. I'm going to create that field. There you go. I've created the device. Lovely stuff. And I think that's pretty much it, hopefully. And of course, let's make sure to destroy the device at the end. Destroy device. Eight. Device. Hmm, uh, the allocator state allocator. And hopefully that's pretty much it. Let's see. So it seems to be fine. Which is interesting and it didn't panic. So that means they have created the device successfully. Now for the git queue. Uh, now the thing is create device have already created a dev device and the queues because we already have told us told it the information that it needs to create the queues right but we need to get the handle to the queue okay in this case i only have one queue so vk get which is basically the first queue so vk get device queue so the device is state the device queue family index state queue family and then the queue index is zero because i want the just the first and in fact we only have one which is of course obviously going to be the first and then there's the pq okay here i'm just gonna give it state queue and we're done and of course this actually doesn't return uh an error as you can see it's just void because in fact this doesn't really create anything it just gives you the handle to the queue that is created by the device. So yeah, couldn't create device and queues. In fact, it's much more better to say couldn't create device and queues. Because in fact, in this in this kind of process, uh, two things are getting created, the device and the queues, both. So yeah. And of course, I don't have a number called queue yet. So let's create it. And there you go. But in fact, you know, I need to make sure to set set it to the reference to that. Okay, now let's create create new field queue. There you go. Now I have my physical device, my surface, my device, my queue. Nice. I don't need to destroy the queue because it's just a handle. It's not really anything. So yeah, and that's pretty much it. We have got our hand like uh, our queue. We got our device, physical device, all that beautiful stuff. Uh, let me see what warnings I have put away. Let's see what warnings I have. Empty statement. It just tell me that I can actually remove that, that thing. Let's remove that thing. And I think that's pretty much it. Now to sum up, I'm just going to show you another cool thing that you can use for your research, which is the database created by the same developer, right? Uh, all right, so this is a basically a database we can where you can research about uh, GPUs, uh, GPU reports. 
So, for example, you can sort by stuff. For example, Max API version, you can sort with that. You can sort with the latest driver version, the last submission, the count, blah, blah, blah. You can sort by, uh, you can filter by platform, as you can see here. Uh, you can also go ahead and look for properties, features, extensions, formats, and stuff like that. Uh, so for example, for example, extensions. Okay. If we go to extensions. My connection is so slow for some reason. All right. Interesting stuff. As you can see, it tells you how much devices have or at least how much reports there is that an extension is right there. For example, here, as you can see, for VKKHR swap chain, it's there is a 99.31% coverage, which is just crazy. Uh, so yeah. So that is really lovely. Next up is VKKHR maintenance and stuff like that, uh, which is interesting. Now, these are the extensions. But yeah, you can actually check through this website. It's really, really interesting. I really recommend, I recommend you check it out. Um, also, if you want to understand how a function works, uh, for example, let's say, let's say for example, VK create instance, go to Google, right? VK create instance, all right. And say, um, just, uh, let's say Vulkan, right? There we go. And just wait a bit. You probably don't have to wait this much. But yeah, anyway. Um, VK create instance inside the registry. And there you go. You get the C specification stuff. Just read through this. And for example, it will tell you what are the possible errors, for example, the return codes. Uh, and it will also tell you like a description of what it, what's that function supposed to do. And it will tell you also how, what is the valid usage of that function. As you can see, the parameters, what are they supposed to be? For example, here, VK instance create info, I can actually click it and I'm gonna go to another registry page, which is gonna tell me what are the VK uh, create, instance create info is about. And look at that, all that crazy information. Uh, that you can learn from. Of course, there's also the Vulkan specs. You can just search for them. Vulkan specs and say which version you're interested in. For example, 1.3. And there you go. Vulkan 1.3 and just... Uh, I don't know. So there you go. You just click on that, you know, and the specifications will come up. And this is basically the whole specification of the Vulkan API, which you can actually research yourself, read about uh, and stuff like that, which is really awesome. All right. So basically an API is just like a contract. So for example, basically here, here, let me, let me give you a simple way to think about it. Now me as a developer using the Vulkan API, I have to read this. I have to read this uh, spec specification of the API, but also the driver developer, whoever is, is developing the drivers for, let's say, NVIDIA GPUs, AMD GPUs, etc. He's also reading this specification because in fact, what is an API at the end of the day? It's just a contract between, let's say, in, in this case, it's a contract between the developer, the application developer and the driver developer, right? It's just a contract to, to actually specify, um, for example, what is the host and device environment or the fundamentals or the execution model, object model, where is the initialization, how it's done, what are the parameters, uh, what could be the results, what could be the errors, etc., and stuff like that. <laughs> that's basically what a specification is. All right, so that's pretty much it, I think, for today's video. And hopefully I gave you enough information to actually go ahead and even research yourself. And if you want to help us 
as the developers community around Vulkan, you can actually go ahead, um, you can click on upload, okay? And then you can upload your, your, your GPU information to, to the database. So we can also use it to, you know, make some, you know, just add it to the database so we can search about it. And of course, uh, it, it's not really anything about safety, you know, it's not anything about security. It's just that each device have some certain capabilities that you have to know as a Vulkan developer or not necessarily know, but you got the point anyway. So for now, for me, I already have presented, uh, for already uploaded my report to the database just today more uh, in the morning. So yeah, and device type, discrete GPU, blah, blah, blah. So that's pretty much it really, I think for this video. All right, so I'm just gonna pause for a second and we'll see where we go from there. All right, I just uh, I just thought I didn't actually explain some things. All right, so there is the, uh, the so there's two things. There's a physical device and there is the logical device. Now, the thing is, the logical device is like the uh, interface to your physical device. And the thing is, you could have several physical devices and they're one logical device, okay? Um, it's similar to logical disk like you can have a logical disk, which basically uses two physical disks. Uh, in fact, this is the same thing with, with the physical devices and logical devices. And in Vulkan, we, uh, we use the queue to, to submit commands to the, the GPU so we can execute those commands. Uh, all right. Of course, asynchronously, then we can use some primitives called there is semaphores, there is fences and there is stuff like that which we can use to synchronize our execution stuff between the queues themselves, between like the GPU stuff, and also between the GPU and CPU. If I remember well, the fences are used between the GPU and the CPU, right? And the, the semaphores are used between the, you know, the queues of the GPU, if I remember well, but we're gonna get into that part uh, eventually, where we actually have to, to learn about this information. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was it, I think. Select the key family. Just so if I didn't explain it, again, the key family is just, you know, uh, like the queues are actually uh, grouped into three key families. Uh, at least not Q3. So in my case, it is three, right? But it's not necessarily three. But basically, it's grouped in families and each family can can do certain operations. And by the way, the best, the best, uh, the best key families are the ones that have less queues. That's the first thing, and the second thing, there are less general. There are more dedicated. So in this case, for example, the key family zero is really general. It, ha it can do graphics, it can do compute, it can do transfer, it can do sparse binding, right? And then it have sixteen queues, <laughs> right? The key family one have only two queues. And the only thing that it does, transfer a bit and sparse binding a bit, but it doesn't support presentation. So it's really the Q family one, for example, is really dedicated and dedicated to what? It, it's dedicated to transferring uh, data. And what could that be, data be? For example, textures, let's say vert vertices data, shaders, I think, and stuff like that. Okay, uh, don't worry too much about image transfer granularity. That's just a limit. Um, so basically, if if the, if it's one one one, you have you don't have to worry. Okay, but sometimes when it comes to dedicated transfer queues, you could have something other than one, and then you could have some limits. For example, let's say if it's four four four, then you can only let's say for example. Uh, upload four by four by four instead of one pixel by one pixel by one pixel. For example, if you have an image of one pixel times one pixel, for example, right? You cannot upload if, if let's say this is four times four or two times two, etc. You cannot do that. So yeah, at least that's how I understood it. So yeah, 
And then here, for example, Q family two, this one supports presentation, uh, but it only supports compute and transfer. So for example, here, what I can see here is that I can use Q family zero for graphics. Okay. Like in an optimal situation, we can use uh, Q family zero in this case for graphics. And I can use uh, the Q family two for compute and for transfer and for presentation, for example. Or in fact, no, I can use it for compute and presentation. For example, compute, I can use it for pre-processing. No, no, not pre-processing, po post-processing, like effects uh, on the screen, like generating effects. So yeah, and then you have the, the this guy, which looks so dedicated to transfer. <laughs> so we're gonna give it the, the, the the task of transferring data between the CPU and the GPU, because in fact, uh, the thing is this dedicated transfer Q families, uh, like they are dedicated, they are so good at transferring data between the CPU memory and the GPU memory. Okay, and that's the thing. But but you shouldn't use them. Uh, the better one for from GPU to GPU, you know, it's just like inside the GPU, but you just change the memory from here to here. You have to use something else other than this, usually. Uh, you can just use your graphics thing, okay? And we can use this Q family 2 for presentation. So when we're presenting to the window, we don't have to wait for presentation to to complete. We can just render the next, the next frames using this queue while this queue is presenting to the window the the current frame which is really nice but you got the point this is just uh but in this tutorial you know and especially for beginners and even intermediates if you want to just use one queue it's really much better uh it's easier because in fact if you don't know how to use queues then you you're just gonna make it worse so that's basically it uh so that's why we're only gonna use one queue Right, and I think that's it, hopefully. We selected physical device. And also don't over-engineer selecting physical devices. Uh, just select the first one and make sure to, 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 to see if there is no device, because if there's no devices, then well, we cannot, we, there is no f first device, okay? And here I'm saying one instead of count, because in fact, I'm only interested in one object. Now here, if you say something other than one, you may have a segmentation fault because you're going to be uh, accessing memory that you, you don't have access to. Uh, let me try it out. If I, if that would work out, let's see. Uh, right. Let's see. Yep. It seems to not responding. Interesting, but it didn't tell me anything about it. Uh, I don't know, but either way, just make sure that this is one. And notice that right now it's fine, lovely. And I think that's pretty much it. Yep, exactly. That's pretty much it. VK instance, VK queue, allocator. So yeah, that's it for today's video. See you later, guys. Goodbye.